Hi everybody, this is chapter 8 on transformations and it will include sections 1, 2, 3, and 4 in this video. Um, in section 8.1 we're going to take an overview of all of the rigid transformations and we're going to look at images, corresponding parts, pre-images, Right, any type of transformation of a figure in a plane um, is a change in the position, the shape, or the size of the figure. Um, in your transformation, the original figure is always the pre-image, and the resulting figure is the image. All right, so the transformations we're going to look at are going to be isometries, um, and that's a, a transformation where the pre-image and the image are congruent, so they're not going to change size. Um, the angle measures, the side lengths will always remain the same for both the pre-image and the image. Um, it is also called a rigid transformation because the size does not change and the shape does not change. Um, the three rigid transformations or isometries that we're going to look at are called translations, otherwise known as slides reflections, which are flips, or, or and um, rotations, which are also known as turns. Here's just a visual to show you the three rigid transformations. You have um, the first one, which is a slide, and in a slide, the figure just moves either left or right, up or down, so it, it slides on the plane. A reflection or a flip, think of it as a mirror image, so they will be mirror images, the two um, figures will be mirror images of each other. And then a rotation is a turn, so that figure is going to move to you know, a certain angle around the plane. All right, so here they're asking is the transformation, does it appear to be an isometry? Remember, an isometry is a rigid transformation, which means that our figures would not change size or shape. Um, if you look here from the pre-image to the image, they didn't change shape, but the size did change. So this is not an isometry because the size changed. All right, so here they're asking us to identify the transformation going from the pre-image to the image. And here, if we notice, going from the pre-image to the image, the figure is still oriented the same way. Um, the dots that is down here is still in the same spot. The shape just moved over to the right. So this would be a translation or a slide. All right, when we look here at our figure and we go from the pre-image to the image, I do notice that the, the dot is still in the same position, but the orientation of the figure. This one is opening up to the right. The image is opening up to the left. So this is almost like, here's our line of reflection, and this would be a reflection or a flip. All right, next, um, if we look from our pre-image to our image, the dot on the figure has moved, um, and I can tell this figure opens up to the left again, but this one is opening up towards the bottom of the figure. So it's not a translation, it's not a slide, it's not a flip because they're not mirror images, but this one will be a rotation they rotated the figure. All right, and so from here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at um, our pre-image right here and identify what each um, letter or each part of the problem, A, B, and C, would be, whether it is a translation, a reflection, or a rotation. So if we look from here, to here, I notice that the F is now a mirror image of the original pre-image. So A is going to be a reflection. If I look at B, the F is still oriented the exact same way as it is on the pre-image, 
but it moved on the grid. So that is going to be a translation or a slide for B. And then F, because the original F is standing upright, <coughs> excuse me, and for C, it is facing downward, that is going to be a rotation of the figure. All right, um, when we name a transformation, we can name it by arrow notation, um, going from a pre-image to an image. And to show, so you can see down here, here are the arrows um, on the figure, but then here's the arrows we're talking about. So the pre-image is always the original point. To show the image point and to show that it's related to K, you do K with an apostrophe. It's called K prime. Um, and that will show how we, that will be how we show an image point. All right, so here they give us two figures. We have um, E, F, G, H, which maps to E prime, F prime, G prime, and H prime. So they want us to answer these questions. What are the images of point F and point H? Remember, your images will match up to your pre-images. You'll just put the little apostrophe or the prime symbol. So the image to point F would be F prime, and the image to point H would be H prime. And then they want to know the pairs of corresponding congruent sides. So our pairs would be EH, or excuse me, we could do EH on the original figure, and that would be congruent to E prime, H prime, over here. Those are a pair. We could do H to G and H prime to G prime. So H G is congruent to H prime to G prime. Then we have G F and G prime to F prime. So G F is congruent to G prime to F prime, and then our last one, F E to F prime to E prime. So F E is congruent to F prime and E prime. All right, our next section is 8.2, and we're going to take a look now at translations. All right, so a translation is a transformation that maps all points of a figure in the same distance and in the same direction. Um, so a translation is also what we've talked about in the last one as a slide. Um, and a translation is an isometry. So it's a rigid transformation. The shape will move, but it doesn't change shape or size. All right, when we are looking to describe a translation, we will use an ordered pair and we'll use um, either addition or subtraction to show the movement left and right and then up and down. So here um, we always start off with the original order pair notation of x, y, and then to show our change, whatever the figure moved um, left or right will be added or subtracted to the x value. If it moves right, we will add to the x value. If it moves left, we'll subtract to the x value. Um, and then if it goes up or down, we will add or subtract to the y value. If the figure goes up, we will add to the y value. If it goes down, we will subtract to the y value. Um, so you can see here our original figure, A, B, C, D. Um, if we look at point D, we can see that the point moved over one, two, three, four. So excuse me, move to the right four places. So we added four to X down here to show the transformation or the translation. And then it also moved down two. And because it moved down two, we did Y minus two to show the rule for all the points in the translation. All right, so here we are given the pre-image of P, 
QR. And the translation is going to be X minus 2. So it's going to go down, or excuse me, it's going to go to the left 2. And then Y minus 5 will be down 5. So they want us to graph the image of PQR. So we're going to start off and find just the ordered pairs for each of our points. So for P, the original ordered pair is right here. So it would be, the ordered pair would be 2 for the X value, 1 for the Y value. Q is equal to, um, it's right here, so it's going to be 3 for the X value and 3 for the Y value. And then R is, um, the original order pair would be negative 1 for X and 3 for Y. So now we're going to apply our rule, which means for each x value, I will subtract 2, and each um, y value, I will subtract 5. So for the first one, 2, p, my x value for p is 2. If I do 2 minus 2, it would give me a 0. And then my y value is 1. If I do 1 minus 5, I'm going to end up with negative 4. Um, for q, my x value is 3. 3 minus 2 is 1. And then for y, we would do 3 minus 5 and end up with negative 2. And then for r, we have negative 1 minus 2 which is going to make it negative 3, and 3 minus 5 again is negative 2. So those are my image coordinates, and we'll go ahead and graph those. We're going to go ahead and graph those on the next slide. All right, so here you can see our image has been graphed. P, our coordinates were 0, negative 4. It's right there. Q was 1, negative 2. So the vertex is right there. And then R was um, negative 3, negative 2. And you can see the vertex there. OK, so here we have. Um, the pre-image of PQRS, and they are looking at the image of P prime, Q prime, R prime, and S prime, and they want us to describe the rule or the translation. So we have to figure out, you know, how each point is shifting. So you really just want to pick one of the points. They should all be the same, and we're going to just use um, the highlighter here to see, well, how far over does it go? It's almost like you're going to draw like a straight line until you get to the P prime, and then we'll go down. So if I look and I count, we go over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 boxes. So my translation from XY would be for every X value because they move to the right, they added 8. And then go down 2, so it would be y minus 2. And that would be the translation for the points. And you can check it if you check another one. And if we go from s over, you can see if we count, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 boxes over, and then 2 down. <clears throat> So that would be the translation or the rule. All right, our next section is section 8.3. We're going to look at reflections in this section. All right. Um, a reflection is when a figure flips across a line. Um, and with a reflection, the figure will not change shape or size. 
but the two figures will be mirror images of each other or they'll be opposite orientations. When you have a reflection, you always have a reflection line. So kind of think of it, I always say a mirror image. The reflection line will be, um, think of it as that mirror that you're looking into. Um, it is the line that the figure is reflected over. Um, if we look in this picture here, we have B and B prime, it's reflected over line R. So it will be here, which means B is gonna be the exact same distance from line R. Um, <clears throat> point A is on the line, so when you reflect it, the reflection is actually still going to be on that line. It's going to be the same point because it's on the line of reflection. All right, so if we look here, we have point P, which is the coordinates are 3, 4, and point P is right here. It's reflected across y equals 1. So they want to reflect it off of this line right here. And they want to know the coordinates of the reflection. So if we go from 1, y equals 1, our line of reflection, and we count up, it goes up 1, 2, 3 spaces. So our point would be directly below y equals 1, and it would be down 3 spaces. So if we count, we go down 1, 2, 3. So there's p prime. And the coordinates of that point are going to be 3, negative 2. So if we look up here, C would be the coordinates of the image of this reflection. All right, so here we're going to look at um, triangle ABC. And we are going to reflect it over the y-axis, so our y-axis is right here. And we want to know the, the, um, what the image will look like. So A, the original point is negative 3, 4. If we are reflecting over the y-axis, really what we need to do is our point is going to go straight across that y-axis. We just have to count you know, how many spaces over from the y-axis is it. So if I look, it's one, two, three. So I'm going to go over one, two. Let me, sorry, my dots are not very good right now. I'm going to go over one, two, three spaces. So right here would be A prime. Okay. Now um, C. It's over on the right hand side of the picture. So when we do the image, we're going to go over one, two, three, four. So I'll go over four spaces over the y axis. So one, two, three, four. So C prime will be right here. Now B, remember, it is on the axis, so it's going to stay when we reflect it. That will also be B prime. So when I draw the figure, and again, please don't judge. I cannot draw a straight line with the stylus um, to save my soul. All right, there is our image. Imagine if the lines were straight, it would look beautiful. Next, we're going to talk about line symmetry or reflectional symmetry. Um, and Basically, line symmetry is like if you were to take a shape and it was a piece of paper and you could fold it into two equal parts, that would be line symmetry. So a line of symmetry divides a plane figure into two congruent halves. Some figures have no line symmetry, others have one line of symmetry, and then others have multiple lines of symmetry. All right, so here we are looking at a hexagon and we want to know how many lines of symmetry does a regular hexagon have. So they want us to sketch them um, and then, you know, what will divide it into two equal parts. So if I look here at my figure, I know that I could probably divide it right through there. Imagine that's going through those two points. There we go. Um, 
and this would give me a line of symmetry it goes through exactly through so if I fold it it would be two equal parts I want you to take a second see if you can sketch maybe some other lines of symmetry or think about where you think they would be and then in the next slide we'll look at all the different lines of symmetry all right so here you can see all of the lines of symmetry for our hexagon um, one way of finding a line of symmetry is to go through the center of a side to the center of another side and you can do that there are six sides so you have three lines of symmetry there um, and then just like we kind of did before going from vertex to opposite vertex um, and by doing that because there are six sides again there are three lines so a regular hexagon which is a six-sided figure has six lines of symmetry total all right this is the last section for chapter eight it's eight four and we're going to talk about rotations um, in section eight four all right a rotation the first type of rotation we're going to talk about is a rotation about a point um, and typically we'll identify a point and we'll have a rotation around that point and we'll name like a number of degrees. So here um, that point will serve as the vertex for our angle of rotation. It's the center of the rotation. Um, and it will, like we could say it's 10 degree rotation, a 50 degree rotation, and we'll measure out the angle going from point R to and the um from r to like point v and then we'll measure a 10 degree angle to find v prime um a rotation does not change the size or the shape of the figure it just or, um, moves the figure it rotates it about the center of rotation all right so the next couple slides we're going to look at the um, how to draw a rotation. So we have triangle uh, OLB, and we want to rotate that triangle around point C for 100 degrees. So what we're going to do is we need to um, construct an angle, and we're going to start with a ray going from O to C, and then we need to construct an angle that measures 100 degrees to measure O prime, to find O prime. And as you can see here, we used a protractor to measure out and create an angle that equals 100 degrees. So we have our ray, OC, and then we measure that 100 degree angle. Now, to get O prime in the correct place, what you want to do is you want to measure with your compass um, the radius from O to C, and then you can come over and make the same arc on your angle, your other ray for your 100 degree angle. And here you can see um, they measured it out with the compass and they made the arc. So that's O prime. And then you would do the same thing with points B and L to find B prime and L prime and then connect all the points together. So it would follow, make that 100 degree angle and then measure the radius from C to L, make your arc on your CL prime ray, and then also measure from C to B and make your arc on C B prime ray. And here you can see once we have the three points, they did, um, they connected those three points to form our rotation image. And it's B prime, L prime, and O prime for our final image.